So we are looking at the common misconceptions with chip and run. What are they and can you use a chip and run with a lob wedge and still use your wrists? Let's have a look at how you can and how it's going to give you more consistency and more variability around the greens. If you're new to the channel guys, welcome. If you have to lowering your scores or increasing your enjoyment of the game, you've come to the right spot because we're helping you with all areas of your game. If you enjoy the channel, which hopefully you do, please hit the subscribe button. It's free of charge. Hit the bell icon as well. That way you miss no notifications for the new videos coming out. On to today's video, we are having a look at short game and we're going to have a look at a chip and run. Now, I've had a student in very, very recently and he was struggling with his short game. We're talking really good player, a plus three handicap. And what he was struggling with was his concept of what a chip and run was. He had massively misunderstood it. He was playing chip and runs with really stiff arms. And if you thought a chip and run should be anything like this, you're in the right spot here to help you out. So what we're going to look at is this is what he was doing. Both quite far back in the stance, both arms pretty straight. And then making sure the arms stayed straight at all times during the action and playing these little chip and runs. So there, there, I caught the ground a little bit there. It's probably going to work out absolutely perfect. It's just worked into the slope. But I got a little bit diggy on it. And the problem is if you're keeping your arms too straight and you're not using your body properly, it's really easy for these arms to get disconnected away. And it's the tension that we're building up in these arms. Now, I was explaining it to Ian that his arms are staying so straight here that if you're like him, he was struggling with either really fatting them and duffing them a bit or occasionally thinning them because he was then working backwards and his head was moving side to side. A lot of this is coming from the fact that these arms are so disconnected from the body and everything's not working as a unit. Also on a chip and run, he thought that the wrist didn't move at all. They still do move a bit because as the club is swinging and going back, if the arms are staying with the body, the wrist will have had to work a little bit just due to the fact that the club's going upwards, the wrists are going to be a little bit of a hinge. Now, how do we get rid of this tension in the arms but still play rub balls that are able to run out near the hole? First thing we look at is where these arms are located relative to the body. So what I like to see is that the arms sit on the sides of the rib cage here. So you can see they're sitting in at the sides here. And then from there, what we're going to do is bend forwards to hit the shot and keep them in place. So now we've got a connection, but a softness in the arms. Not as straight arms and tension, but softness where there's a connection to the side of the body. Then from here, you can then alter the ball position and the shaft direction. And then you can let the arms, the body and the club move back and through together. You see the wrists are moving there, but I'm still playing that little chip and run type action. But what we want to make sure happens is that this right elbow stays next to the body. If it gets away, it either reconnects and we get loads of angle, which we've got to get rid of, which leads to the leading edge going in, or we end up being the way the arms are driving forwards, providing too much energy. So the feeling of the arms being back here with them being soft, we're still going to play a back ball position. Weight's going to stay near the front foot, but from here, everything can move back and through together as a unit. So we can keep the arms and the body and the club Moving back and through as a unit. You can see there, that's chip and run down there. Still ran out a long way. Still easy to play, but it had some hinge in it. Now, we've got another ball over here. I'm going to have a look at a slightly different shot. This is a slightly more lofted shot, but the principle of the arms and the body working together is exactly the same. As you can see here, this has got a little ridge to go over, but from here, we can just make sure the wrists are allowed to move a little bit more. So if the wrists move, move going back and we and the face opens a touch, then obviously the wrists have got to release on the way through. They're not held and driven. That right hand can work under, which therefore means that we're going to be able to use the sole properly and we're not creating a driving digging action. We're creating a bottom of the arc that's going to skid a little bit more. So having a look at it from here, what we're doing is get these arms more connected to the body. It's still the same idea. It's going to be arms and body working as a unit. But obviously the wrists are going to work a little bit more back. We work a little bit more through. So it's soft, pop it over the slope and just let that ball trickle down towards the hole. So the key is what you've got to make sure you're doing is get this connection of the arms to the body. That way the pivot moves, but the wrists move with the body and you're letting the club move 
through the momentum and letting the wrists act as a hinge. You're not completely locking them out and putting tension into the arms, which is going to ruin any chances you've got of consistency of strike and control in the distance and the trajectory. If you've enjoyed this, guys, please give it a thumbs up. Hopefully you've subscribed. If you haven't, please do comment below what you'd like to see in future. As always, thanks for watching and talk to you again soon.